Step right up, folks. We're going to have a little training session on paintbrushes today because you know that you do get confused at times when you go out to building supply centers. Look at here. There's such a variety of paintbrushes and rollers. And what do you use? What job are you doing? What sort of product are you using? Where are you painting? And what sort of uh, project is it you're doing? Is it a fine featured uh, or is it a large area? Well, let me give you some tips here. So right here in the workbench, I want to show you the difference between brushes. Now this particular brush right here, it's a four inch brush, but it's a pure bristle brush. Now a pure bristle brush, sure it's black, but we can't go by the color because black does not necessarily mean it's a pure bristle because here is one here that's a pure bristle as well, but it's not black. And the next ones coming up here are different colors, so you really can't go by the color. You always read on the handle or on the actual retaining strip that holds in the, uh, the bristles to the actual brush handle. Now, in this particular case, being pure bristle, these two identify this one here could be horsehair. This one here, uh, I believe, is hog's hair. And all different little projects, all different prices, because you buy a hog's hair brush, it's going to be less money than a horsehair brush, and many other different types of pure bristles that are used. But why a pure bristle brush? The pure bristle brush is used for oil and elkit paints. Oil and elkit. So when it comes to water-based, like latex or acrylics, no way. Don't use a pure bristle brush. Now, the question normally comes back, why? The reason why, because when you dip any pure bristle brush into a water-based product, be it water or be it latex or acrylic latex, they'll blossom or they'll blow up or swell, possibly, is the term to use. And when that takes place, you've got a real ball at the top of your uh, bristle, and it just makes for a miserable job when it comes to doing your paint project. And it streaks and uh, pulls out hairs as well. Incidentally, that's another little tip there. When it comes to uh, uh, buying a new brush, always wash it out with hand soap. Take it to the vanity sink and uh, wash it out with hand soap in your hand, and uh, you'll find that all the loose hairs will come out of it, just like after a haircut when you get your hair done at the uh, salon. Now, here is a pure uh, brush or pure bristle brush, but it's not pure bristle. This one here is pure bristle, but it's polyester. Now, polyester is a man-made product. And take a look here. You can see the different colors as it uh, tones down the bristle. And the reason why they're different, because it's getting thinner and thinner to the point at the end, they flatten it out. And the reason why they flatten it out, it's designed to hold on to water-based products. And water-based products, when you dip that into the product, pull it out, it's now the capillary is drawing it up the bristles in order to load the brush for that painting project that you're doing. Now, polyester is not the only product uh, that you can use with uh, latex or water-based paints. Here's a nylon. Now, a nylon normally is black. And the nylon, when you see it under the light and you turn it, if I turn it there, you'll, you'll see the, uh, it's, a, it's definitely a synthetic because it has a bit of a, a flash on it or it looks shiny. And so does the polyester. But the black uh, uh, nylon brush used for, again, uh, uh, latex or water-based products and they're lesser money in a lot of cases as well. But this is why. Let me turn them sideways. You see the difference in the thickness of the bristle? The polyester, a little higher quality brush, more bristles. The nylon, lesser bristles, and certainly not as fine featured as far as the tips in order to give you that real smooth uh, uh, product finish. So when you come to using a paintbrush, keep in mind, the better the brush, the better the finish. So good, better, best, always go for the better, even if it means buying one and storing it away for a long time. In fact, I've known people to keep brushes. I know painters that are involved with me on projects have brushes that are 30 years old, not uncommon at all. Now, here's a polyester brush. This polyester brush, again, the same as the, uh, the first one here, with the exception it's got a, an angle trimmed on the bristles. The reason why the angle, this is called a trim brush. And this is for doing trim in around windows, in around uh, corner trims, anywhere there's a very, very fine uh, line to follow. And the reason for that, when you apply your paint to the, uh, uh, the project, when you're drawing it, the paint now is actually flowing out, and you've got a good angle here, and you've got a good uh, visual sight to follow that on to the uh, project that you're painting. So there's the uh, polyesters, and there's the nylon. Keep in mind, those two are used for latex and uh, not oil-based. Like, you don't use even a polyester with oil. Don't really care for it. Always use a pure bristle. Now, here's one that I always consider the throwaway. 
the throwaway, which is the foamies. Some people call them the, the foamies because they're very inexpensive. Used for that small project or in and out sort of project. When you do it and you don't want to clean it, you throw it away. In a lot of cases, if you don't use the right thinners, uh, they won't be any good anyway. So foam brushes are used really for that throwaway project, uh, doing a small uh, uh, possibly a project or on a bicycle, that sort of thing. Now, here's a couple of brushes here that get, uh, in a lot of cases, misnamed. Uh, you look at the both of them, and a lot of people say, oh, that's a whitewash brush. Well, this is truly the whitewash brush here, and this is a masonry brush. And again, there's the difference. The whitewash brush is uh, quite narrower in the, uh, the actual bristle to the masonry brush is uh, much wider. The reason for that, the type of texturing, the type of finish that you're applying, being cementitious or cement type of uh, products uh, mixed with water for painting stucco, for painting concrete walls, or even possibly texturing concrete uh, uh, patios or uh, driveways or sidewalks. So masonry brush versus the stucco brush, yes, they can be used for the same thing. It's just a matter that one is a little more qualified than the other. And don't overlook the artist brush. The little artist brush always likes to have a couple in your shop. And the reason for that, that little job that you want to do, maybe that little decorative piece in around a knob or in around that molding on your kitchen cabinet doors, very easy to clean and again good better best there you have one there say this one here is a pure bristle this one here is actually a camel hair so uh, pure bristle brushes yes they are and they're normally used for uh, oil and uh, elka type of paints so there you have it some nice uh, trim uh, information to help you out on your next paint project so i hope it helps